Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Hyde, a board-certified lipidologist with CardioSound. I want to talk today about the Frank's earlobe crease. What's the big deal about the earlobe crease? Is it really important? Is it really associated with coronary disease? Some scientists believe it's just there when people age. It's associated maybe with premature aging, but it's been seen in um, old paintings, statues from time immemorial, Actually, the Roman Emperor Hadrian had that earlobe crease. You can see it on the statue. Is it really that big of a deal? The diagonal earlobe crease is called Frank's sign or Frank's crease uh, because it was named after Dr. Sanders Frank who noticed it in patients with angina way back in the 1970s. So is it really a marker for heart disease? He thought it might be significant. That's when he published his paper. Today we'll talk about some scientific studies about the earlobe crease. We'll look at the anatomical evidence, the cardiovascular event evidence, and the pathological or histological evidence. So let's start with the evidence from coronary anatomy. This study looked at 430 patients with no known coronary disease to determine whether Frank's earlobe crease was associated with four different markers for coronary disease, four different aspects of coronary disease measured by CT coronary angiogram. They asked the question, is Frank's earlobe crease associated with any coronary disease, with significant coronary disease greater than 50% blockage, with multivessel disease, or with the number of coronary artery segments that have plaque? What they found is that the earlobe crease significantly predicted all four measures of coronary disease. Now according to that study, if you have Frank's earlobe crease, there's a 78% chance that you have heart disease. What about coronary artery events, CV events or cardiovascular events? If the earlobe crease is significant, you'd expect that it would be associated with what we call hard events, like heart attacks or sudden cardiac death. Now we would call a soft event chest pain, which chest pain can be subjective, but we were looking for hard events. This study followed 108 patients for 8 to 10 years. It separated them into two groups, those with no heart disease at the beginning of the study and those who had heart disease. Patients with no heart disease who had the earlobe crease had an eight-fold higher risk of cardiac death and a seven-fold higher risk of hard cardiac events compared to those who did not have the crease. Among patients who already had heart disease, those who had also the earlobe crease had a four-fold higher risk of cardiac events and death compared to those heart patients who did not have the crease. That's a significant difference. So what about does the earlobe crease just happen with normal aging or with premature aging? This autopsy study of 45 adult subjects compared those who had the earlobe crease to those who didn't. In those 45 subjects they studied, there was no significant age difference between the two groups. They did, though, find statistically significant differences in pathology between those who had the earlobe crease and those who didn't. They found differences in cardiac muscle weight, in ventricular wall thickness, and in the presence of arterial inflammation and nerve inflammation at the base of the earlobe crease. Arterial inflammation in the earlobe crease is associated with changes in heart muscle, changes which are related to heart failure. So, We've looked at these studies that link the earlobe crease to coronary anatomy, to cardiac events, and linking earlobe arterial inflammation to physical changes in the heart muscle. I believe the earlobe crease matters. I believe it means something. It does mean that you likely have artery disease. What should you do when you have an earlobe crease? If you can, you should get your arteries tested to find out whether there's arterial inflammation or not. We recommend two alternate technologies, two different methods for testing your arteries for inflammation. 
ultrasound <clears throat> to measure the thickness of your plaque and the danger level of your plaque, looking for whether you have soft plaque or not. And I'm not talking about the conventional way to do a carotid artery ultrasound, which is to look for blockage, something that needs a surgical procedure. It can only answer whether you need surgery or not. That test is covered by insurance, but it doesn't predict heart attacks very well. We can predict heart attacks much better if we look at the thickness of the plaque and whether it has soft plaque. It's not the flow, but it's about how dangerous the plaque is that predicts heart attacks. Another useful test is the coronary artery calcium scan or heart scan, which calcium is a marker for inflammation. Because the heart calcium scan does not measure soft plaque, and it can be negative even if you have heart disease, it's better to use, I think, both technologies if you can. What should you do if you find arterial inflammation? Ask what's causing it. That's what we do. We help people find out what's causing the inflammation in the earlobe artery and in the rest of the arteries. If you find out all the factors that are causing the inflammation and fix every different source, then you can improve your inflammation and reduce your risk. Thanks for listening.